This algebraic geometry video will give some more examples involving morphisms of algebraic sets. So what we want to do is to show that you can find a product of any two projective varieties and that this is also a projective variety, optoisomorphism. Um, so um, if we've got two varieties A in P to the M and B in P to the N. If we can find a product of P to the M and P to the N, then it's not very difficult to find a product of A and B inside this, essentially just by taking the equations of A and B and combining them. So the main problem is to show that the product of two projective spaces is a projective variety. Well, as we saw earlier, there's something called the Segre embedding, which maps this into um, P, M, N plus M plus N. And what we want to do is to show the image of this really is a product in the category of varieties. Um, so you recall that a product of two sets A and B is, sorry, two objects A and B is an object which is maps to A and maps to B and is universal for this property. So if we've got another object with maps to A and B, then it factors uniquely through the product. So we just have to check that Segre embedding has these two properties. So we better quickly recall what the Segre embedding is. So if P to the M has coordinates X naught up to X M, and P to the N has coordinates Y naught up to Y N, then the image of the Segre embedding is given by X naught Y naught, X naught Y one, and so on up to X M Y N. So we will call these Z naught naught, Z naught one, and so on. And we also remember that there are a whole lot of quadratic equations satisfied by these Zi's, which say Zij, Zkl is equal to something. I always get the wrong way round. I think it's Zil, Zkj, but there's a pretty good chance I've got that wrong, so don't rely on it. So first of all, we have to check there is a morphism from, the, from this variety here, defined by all these quadratic equations, to projective space. So we want to define a map from, from this variety to projective space. So um, by symmetry, we may as well assume that one of the zi's is non-zero. So suppose z naught naught is non-zero. Then we can um, map the, um, let's call this variety segre, the segre variety to um, P to the M just by taking Z naught naught, Z naught one and so on to um, Z naught one, uh, sorry, Z naught naught, Z one naught, Z2 naught and so on. So this will be a point of P to the M, which is well defined because Z naught naught is non zero. Um, on the other hand, instead of taking the set Z naught one, Z naught naught non zero, we might take a different open set, C, say Z naught one not equal to zero. And here the map is given by mapping it to Z naught one, Z one one, Z two one and so on. Um, and now the point is we need to check these two maps. Um, so we say do these coincide on the intersection of the two open subsets. So we want to we want to know that um, these two points. Um, are actually the same. And this follows 
um, from all these relations, Z, I, J, Z, K, L equals Z, I, L, Z, K, J. Um, um, so these two points are actually the same in PM. And similarly, we have several other open subsets covering uh, as part of the cover of the Segre variety. And again, you can check that um, we get a well-defined map to PM on each of these open subsets. And these quadratic relations imply that all these maps are the same on the intersection. So we get a well-defined map from the Segre variety to the two copies of projective space. As you see, this proof is almost trivial. It just consists of some slightly confusing bookkeeping. Um, the other thing we need to check is that we have the universal property. So, so here we've got the Segre variety mapping to PM and to PN. And suppose we've got any other variety C with maps to PM and PN. Then we've got to show that there's a unique map from C to this Segre variety. Um, well, defining maps from arbitrary projective spaces to other projective spaces is a little bit tricky. So what we do is we cover C by affine varieties. So we can think of C as being covered by several affine varieties. Now for each of these affine varieties, if we've proved this behaves like a product, this gives us a map from each of these open, so I should have said these open affine varieties. From each of these open subsets, we get a map to the Segre embedding. And by the uniqueness of the map for the product, these must coincide in all the intersections. So we get a map from the whole of C to the Segre embedding. So we can assume that C is affine, which makes life a bit easier. Um, and um, of course, defining maps from affine varieties to P to the M is a little bit complicated. So we should also cover P to the M and P to the N by all these open affine varieties. So for example, um, um, a morphism to the, um, so a morphism from C to the open subset um, Z, not equal zero of p to the m, so z naught not equal zero, is given by by a set of functions. We take f naught equals one, f one up to f m, where all these f i's are just regular on C. Um, similarly, a morphism to this subset. Um, so it should be x naught not equal naught. Similarly, a morphism to the subset y naught not equal naught on p to the n is given by g naught equals 1, g1 up to g n. Um, so, um, well, in general, um, an affine variety C won't map to the open subset x naught not equal naught of p to the n. But what we can do is we can cover C by a lot of smaller open subsets where each of these open subsets maps to one of the standard open subsets of P to the M and one of the open subsets of P to the N and we can then just glue these all together. So we may as well assume that not only C is affine, but that its image is in the open subset X naught not equal zero of P to the M and similarly for P to the N. Well, now we can define a morphism of C to the to P to the to the Segre embedding just by mapping C to um, F naught G naught F naught G one F naught G two and so on up to F M G N. So this gives a well-defined map from C to projective space, in fact, to an open subset of projective space. And now we just have to um, 
do a lot of small checks, checking that this is all well defined and that that all these maps are the same on the intersections of open subsets and so on. And all of these checks are rather trivial and not terribly exciting to watch. I'm just going to omit them. Um, notice, by the way, that the Segre embedding is really a combination of two almost completely different um, constructions. First of all, we have a construction of a product p to the m times p to the n, where we're sort of implicitly doing this by taking an open affine cover of p to the m and an open affine cover of p to the n, taking products of these affine sets of the affine covers and then gluing them together. That gives us an abstract variety p to the m times p to the n. Secondly, we're constructing a map from p to the m times p to the n to a projective space p m n plus m plus n. Um, and the construction of the product doesn't really have anything to do with the embedding into projective space. Um, in fact, later on, when we construct products of schemes, the construction of products of schemes will be very similar to the first part of this. That if we've got two schemes, we're going to cover them by affine schemes, take products of affine schemes, and then glue everything together. And then we don't bother with the second part of the construction, because in general, if we've got a scheme, there's no reason why it should be embeddable in projective space. Um, 